<laughs> Wait, let, me, let me do a quick setup. Uh, Johnny C, that's me. Mike Sorry. Brown, mortgage guy, no, broke the mortgage firm. There's Jimmy D, <laughs> Chip Dupola with Keller Williams. This is a real estate talk show. Florida right? Home Pros team. Yeah, I don't even know what would happen there. <laughs> Going gator football to, to Jim being salted in the shower. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, John, we're, we're going to talk a little bit about fantasy. mortgages. <laughs> we're going to talk about mortgages and what's happening with mortgages. But before we do that, which is mostly good news, guys, so you're going to want to stay around for that and s- see how to use the new um, – the new information that's coming in on mortgages to benefit yourself. But Magali, who's been a big fan of the show over the years, she had a couple basic questions, Mike, that I thought would be very helpful because I know Lee, one of our uh, big fans, um, has asked for some of the same information. So let's start with PMI first, which is private mortgage insurance. Okay. Private mortgage insurance is when uh, you don't have at least 20% equity in the house uh, in the house when you buy it. So they have an extra insurance policy uh, that you have to pay for, but that insurance policy is not for you. It's for the bank to protect the bank in case you foreclose on. Did I say that correctly, Mike? Mostly, yeah. Okay, what did I get wrong? Uh, Yeah, so you said 20% equity. So what you mean is like you're buying a home, you're doing a conventional loan, and you don't put 20% down. So anything less than 20% down, a mortgage insurance is required. Mortgage insurance protects the lender. So it's an insurance policy that you pay for as the buyer, but it doesn't protect you. It protects me, the lender. The lender. Right, because I get some coverage. So the exposure for the bank is essentially they're putting in the, the large portion, 95% of the value of the home. That's the, the money that's being lent to you. And if something goes wrong, there's a lot of exposure there. And so there's an insurance policy. And so the, the whole reason mortgage insurance was invented was to – Increase the dream of home ownership, which means low down payment. Banks uh, could low offer down better terms options, right. because they're being protected yeah, on yeah. the back end. Now, PMI, so private mortgage insurance is with conventional loans, uh, just mortgage insurance in general. MI, uh, like FHA, has mortgage insurance. VA kind of has a, a type of mortgage insurance coverage. So. I used to call it MIP and everybody used to drive me crazy. MIP would be a mortgage insurance premium, which is something that's paid upfront. So FHA ah. has both. They got an upfront ah. mortgage insurance premium, and they also have monthly MI. So um, and then let's say you buy a house and that you don't put 20% down, but you've had the house for, let's say, four years, yeah. five years. And then all of a sudden, between you paying down the mortgage yes. and the value of the house increasing, yes. right, that now you do have what's called 20% equity in the house. What can you do? at that point to save money yes i see i think so the question to me is set up like okay so i'm paying mortgage insurance because i didn't have i didn't have a big enough down payment initially at what point will that mortgage insurance go away and so there's several different ways of getting more insurance to to cancel so let's just let me start by saying uh if if you did an fha loan when you did your initial loan unless you put 10 percent down so you did like the normal three and a half percent down fha mortgage insurance does not go away ever it's for the life of the loan the 30 years So the only way to get rid of it on an FHA loan, and this is oftentimes the people who are considering refinances, is to get out of FHA, go into conventional loan where there's either no MI. But that's that's one way of canceling, right? You Mm -hmm. pay off the loans uh, one way or the other, right? Uh, But if you do a conventional loan, let's say your traditional low down payment, you did 5% down, your mortgage insurance is going to be there until you reach more or less that 80% uh, you know, loan to value or essentially 20% equity position. Mm-hmm. So how do you get to that 80% loan to value, meaning the principal, the loan balance compared to the value of your home? Well, you could just do it naturally, meaning you pay your mortgage payment. And after somewhere between like the eighth and ninth year, if you did 5% down, you're going to get that equity position where your, your original, you know, your, the, the balance on your loan as you made a payment through the years compared to the original value when you bought the home is now 80%. Right. Right? Right. So that's a long time to wait, especially in a uh, real estate market that where the prices are increasing, right? So an inclining real estate market. So the value of your home, it's not what it was when you bought it. Now it's gone up. Mm-hmm. And every year it's going up a little bit more. Mm-hmm. So the first way, I'll call that the natural way, you've paid down your your mortgage payment through the years. Uh, the second is the, the market value increases. And so you achieve that equity position faster than you would just by paying down your mortgage. So once two years have passed, Mm -hmm. maybe even after a year, but definitely after two years, Mm -hmm. you can call your loan servicer and say, hey, I think we have 20% equity. Our home has increased in value these last two years. Uh, We've made our regular payments. Our principal balance hasn't gone down, right, from the original loan to value, but it's gone down some. 
and the market values increase. So we have this value. And then your loan servicer should say something like, okay, well, we need to establish the value of your home. Maybe we do that with an appraisal. Maybe we do that with the real estate, you know, comparative market uh, analysis. But one way or the other, you're going to establish the value. And then if you do, in fact, have that 20% equity, you can cancel the MI there. But that's on conventional loans, right? FHA is not going to be like Do you have to refi to get that? No, no. So no refi, you don't so have to be... refinance. So if, if we're talking about ways of like saving money just without mm -hmm. doing anything at all, other than making a phone call and maybe paying for an appraisal is, hey, talk to a real estate agent. You're going to say, hey, what do you think my home's worth? Compare that, compare that to the balance on your loan. And if you got 80% loan to okay. current market value, make that call. Make yep, that absolutely. Call. Now, Magali had a couple other questions. She wanted to know like, on the mortgage statement, will it show that if there's PMI or not on her mortgage statement? And if there is, um, will that information be in the mortgage statement? Yeah, I'd say usually mm -hmm. the the amount of your payment that's going to mortgage insurance is on your mortgage statement. Mm -hmm. So you should see that. Yes. It's itemized. Usually yeah, you see I, it it's on broken yeah. down. That, yeah. that's Sometimes what I you see they'll have like mm -hmm. a, um, they'll show your previous payment and how that money was distributed. What portion went to principal? What portion went to interest? What portion escrow, went to mortgage escrow. insurance? What what portion went to taxes? taxes insurance. Yeah. Exactly. Now exactly. that gets to another question that Magali had that's a little different. The home equity line of credit called HELOC. Yes. Okay. That's kind of like a second mortgage almost um, against your house. Where it is a second mortgage. It, it's actually a second mortgage. Yep. Okay. Um, I didn't know line of credit if it's considered mortgage or not. It is. But um, with that, with the HELOC, it's almost like having a credit card attached to your house for some of the equity that you have built up in the house and that you use it. I'm assuming this is the way it was when I did it back in 20 years ago. Yep. Uh, you would get a certain line of credit, just like a credit card. And then what you used, you paid for. And then if you paid down on the amount that you owed, then you paid less. Yeah, if you, you paid got interest on the balance. On the balance. Yeah. And if you have no balance and you just have it sitting there, you don't pay anything. And there's only a certain window you can borrow against it, right? Usually some the, the the draw period is some number of years. So from the time you could take the loan through, you know, say five years, you can use it as a credit card, mm -hmm. essentially, like mm -hmm. what Jim was describing. So um, what she wanted to know is, um, do you have to wait for the term to pay off the balance on the HELOC? And the short answer to that is no, right? 